black and the complex Strange shapes in the doorway The scene was black, the screen was still Hello and welcome to Off The Shelf Reviews. I've never really liked house music, and I'm Gary. And today we're going to review and discuss Housebound, which came out in 2014. Written, directed and edited by Gerard Johnston. Ian, why don't you give us the synopsis? Well, the story follows Morgana O'Reilly's character, Kylie. Kylie has just been arrested for trying to steal an ATM machine and has been put under house arrest with her mum and stepfather in the town of Bullford. While under house arrest, Kylie starts to experience some strange and paranormal activity around her house and starts to realize that she might not be alone. Anything? No. no. Oh, that was it. This is going to be one of those films that I would be very surprised that a lot of people got to see. Okay. This film didn't get a theatrical release in the UK. I think it might have had a very limited release in America. Yeah, yeah. This is a very low budget New Zealand horror comedy drama mm. with an estimated budget of about 350,000 New Zealand dollars which is which is a low. which is a micro budget it, it it really is and so after having seen the film now I'm kind of disappointed to hear that there is an American remake in production Blah. and that and that the original film which I think premiered at South by Southwest Film Festival did very very well yeah you know it's managed to it's ended up on streaming services it's on DVD and, uh, and blu-ray and it's just like the film to still it doesn't need a remake <laughs> no it doesn't but you know what the f they fucking do they come across a really good movie and they go hey let's remake that because we can make it better no you can't and yeah I'm, I'm sure I've got Gary's backing on this that this film is fucking awesome yeah. You know? It is very, very good. And so on that, I would also say that if you've never seen this film, this is one of those films where I'd say that it, it has lots of twists and lots of turns and lots of surprising elements, which makes it one of those reviews where I go, if you haven't seen it, I would go and watch the film before this review. <laughs> This film was requested to us and I'd you know, never seen it and wikied it and something happened when I was reading it because my brain went one way and then when I watched the film, it just went a completely other. You know, like we said, we got Morgana O'Reilly playing Kylie. Really liked her. I, I, I really liked She's her. She's not a very likeable character to begin with. No, no, but the actress playing her was really, really good. And you well, she's she's a bit of a badass. She started making me think of that uh, the the girl from you know the girl with the dragon tattoo. Right. That, yeah. That that character, you know, we just watched her run up with her boyfriend, I suppose, to an ATM machine, and they're planning on robbing this thing, and you're like, oh fuck, you know, this is going to start off really quick, you know, badass, but it's this. It's the moment when the guy hits the ATM machine with the sledgehammer and the end <laughs> comes off and smacks him right in the fucking head and knocks him out. But you're like, am I supposed to laugh at that? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, but it's, <laughs> I didn't question that. I just laughed. I thought well, I laughed, but I'm, my, my, like I said, my brain's gone no way. Like, okay, that was pretty funny. You know, it's a, it's a comedy. Let's just go with the fact that it's a comedy. You know, there's this the whole dramatic action sequence where she's chucking in, I don't know, that stick of dynamite into the ATM machine and she's blowing it up and she's stealing the money container out. Then she's grabbing her boyfriend and dragging him to the car. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, okay, I'd have left him, but, you know, come on, we'll go with it. And then jumps into the car Gets Speeds the engine away. started and hits that speed bump. <laughs> She's just there screaming <laughs> as you hear the sirens getting louder. It's like, yeah, you're, you're fucked. <laughs> you are fucked. <laughs> but instead of being sent to jail or to prison or to community service or any anything else like that, she's sentenced to eight months of house arrest living with her mum, whom she doesn't get on with very well. And no. that is the basic setup premise for the film, is that 
it's now comedy drama as she moves back into her mother's house and they don't get along and it comes between all the frictions between this now family but it was so beautifully done as well i mean rima to to Wiata, pl uh, playing miriam she was a great mum you know I, it was just that whole weird relationship of something had happened in the past you know we hear from the counselor dennis who is working with Kylie, you know, to get her past her sentence, you know, and hopefully turn her about. Because, you know, we've we've heard that her father has left her when she was younger and he's got a new family on the Golden Coast and he's doing really well for himself. Where in comparison, you know, Kylie is living in this rundown house with her mum and you know, she's left at a very young age and she started doing drugs and hanging out with the wrong people and that's why she's got into this, this, this state. But working with her mum, Miriam, Miriam's not a nasty character. You know, immediately that's what yeah. I thought that maybe Kylie's run away because mum was a, a bitch. But with the comedy element, I'm like, no, that can't be, it's too dark. But the oddities of her mum come in almost straight away where yeah. Kylie is listening to the radio and... She listens to her mum who's called into the radio station and they're just discussing paranormal activity. And yeah. She's like, well, I've encountered strange phenomenon in my own house. I believe my house is haunted. Yeah. And so Kylie's listening to this just like, you know, really? What the, yeah, what, really? What the hell is the matter with you? But it's, it's, it, it was so it's, well it, it's excellent. A, it's a setup. Yeah, but it was so well done in the filmmaking that I was getting the creepy aspect. Right, You yeah. know, from that initial moment of her driving up to the house in Bulford, and I'm like, that's a creepy fucking house. It's a run-down bed and breakfast. Yeah, yeah, you know, them sitting around at the table having dinner, you know, it's really quite dark. You know, they, they're trying to conserve electricity for bills and stuff like that, but the way it's filmed, I'm like, man, this is fucking creepy. They, they, I, I just feel like something's watching me already. You know, but then the co you know the comedy element come back in when she comes down the stairs and she's like, I need to use the phone, you know, and Miriam's just like, but Kylie, I'm on the phone. She's talking to her her friend, you know, and I'm just like, you can't come into your mum's house and start ordering her about. So I'm starting not to like you. It's the moment when she sat in the living room and she's watching TV. It's Coronation Street, and, right? And, and, <laughs> and the mum and and her boyfriend Graham come in and she's like yeah it's 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 almost half seven and it's coronation street night she's almost intimidated almost petrified to ask By her, her own daughter, daughter you know yeah. yeah but her daughter being a mega bitch just turns up the volume yeah thursdays and fridays are coronation street nights now it's it's only for an hour but it starts at 7 30 and it's almost 7 30 now and then it cuts to miriam in in bed you know watching it on a static old poor reception tv and it's just like oh you poor woman <laughs> yeah. and she's like i will not be bullied in my own house <laughs> <laughs> ross harper playing graham as well i mean he's not in a, a lot and the parts that he is in he's completely silent in the background not saying anything because miriam does do all the talking she's really warm and cuddly and you know she's just got her good intentions at, at heart where graham is maybe the worker kind of guy you know, and he only really has one major talking point with Kylie, but it is so really quite pinnacle to their relationship. Amos, played by Glenn Paul Waru, who is the security officer. He's the guy Amos who... Amos is amazing. <laughs> he's the guy who monitors Kylie's ankle restraint. And, you know, he, he's got her worked out where the borders are, you know, and he, it'll go straight to his phone and he can track her. And I'm like... Yeah, man, you know, I can get he behind this guy. He just seems like a decent guy at first. It's like, he's not doing anything wrong, you know. No. He's, very, he's very friendly, um, but he will soon become a kind of confidant to Kylie as the film goes on. Yeah. To the restless spirit that lives in this house, what is your business here? When the creepy stuff starts kicking off, oh, it was just really well done. You know, you've watched a lot of ghost films in the past you know how it all plays out the shadows the lighting all that kind of strange stuff. noises the strange noises but the way the film gradually built it up and i'll say this now actually as well i was very surprised it was an hour and 51 minutes yeah you know it's almost two hours for, for what it is and i thought to myself is that going to be too long hmm. am i going to be bored by that because like i said i'd wicked it and my brain was like it's a ghost story and my 
you know, I'm watching it and I'm like, well, okay, we'll just, we'll see how it goes. But the gradual build up, yeah, that was really nice because you had the elements of the noises in the roof. It could be pipe work. They've got old boilers. It's an old house, you know. So you're overthinking it, Ian. Just just go with it. Did you see something in the background when you know when she's in the basement? Is that a figure there? No, is it what? No, no. You just the neighbour. Yeah. That guy started to freak me out a bit. <laughs> yeah, it's that first time you see him, he's just got those evil looks that he just sends over yeah. and he looks like, serial killer! Yeah. <laughs> it's but I've seen Tucker and Dale, so I'm just like, hmm, yeah. red herring number one. Yeah, red herring <laughs> number one. But that's it, with all the red herrings going on, I'm like, I thought it was a simple ghost story. Yeah, and so does the character after her first sort of supernatural encounter. Yeah. She starts explaining it to Amos. And Amos is just like, really? And he pulls out a tape recorder. Yeah. And he instantly starts trying to communicate with ghosts. And at that point, I, I applauded. I was applauding the movie. I was like, that's great. I was like, you know, I could tell immediately that the writer, the maker of the film has got to have been a fan of like Ghost Hunters or yeah. one of those other shows. Yeah. Because it's something that, you know, I've had an interest in. It's just wanting to go out there with a the tape recorder and start re having interviewing ghosts. Yeah. Like, what, what are you doing? Yeah. And of course, he plays back the, the tape, and there's there's no sound. There's nothing there, <laughs> and it's just. But he, he's you know he's excited. He's like, well, this could be you know another a side gig to looking after Kylie inside. Well, that's what I'm saying. It's like I've seen a lot of ghost productions, and there's always that one person who goes, "Oh, I completely don't believe it." But the fact that you had Kylie who'd who got, doesn't believe it. She doesn't believe it, but she's being grabbed in the basement. Mm -hmm. You know, a hand has shot out and grabbed her leg, and you're like, oh my God, what the fuck was that? The mum has already experienced stuff in this house for a long period. We're not talking over the last couple of days or since Kylie's turned up. The last 20 years yeah, since, yeah. Ky you know, since Kylie was a little girl. You know, and now we've got Amos, who lives in the nearby area, because he turns up in his pajamas, <laughs> which was fucking awesome. But he's a believer as well. He's writing all the blogs for all the people on the internet. You know, he's setting up cameras around the house. He's setting up sensors to watch out in different temperature changes. And I'm like, okay, so it's a ghost hunting story. <laughs> now we just got to find out who this ghost is. Because there's always a person, isn't there? There's probably a dead body in the wall that they're going <laughs> to find, you know. Well, they, uh, it makes me laugh, you know, she turns on the old computer and dials it up to the internet. Oh, that was brilliant. <laughs> I was just like... <laughs> and then, of course, the computer shorts out and kind of, you know, you see smoke coming out of it. It's like, well, that, that, that's, that's trashed. Yeah. And, uh, and so she starts investigating and she finds out that the house that she's living in was... There was a series of murders or a serious murder that took yeah. place in the house. Yeah, it was a halfway house. I, I think that's where, like, you know, orphan children or something will go there. Troubled teens. Troubled yeah. teens will stay there under the psychiatric care. And this one girl, uh, Lizzie, had been stabbed 67 times and bitten. Stabbed with a... Um, meat fork. A meat fork, so a two-pronged fork. Yeah. And you're just like, okay, so we're looking for Lizzie's body because... Kylie has, you know, she's garnered this information about the halfway house. She's questioned her mother about it and wh why they got the house so cheap. I love it when she's talking to Amos and Amos is like, uh, who was the previous owner? Oh, it was an old lady. She died. And you're like... We never dealt with her, though. She passed away. How did she die? Pardon? How did she die? Um, oh, she was quite old, I think. Yeah. No. But then we have that teddy bear sequence. Oh, God, that was freaky. Where in the middle of the night, you see the shadow move across uh, Kylie as she sleeps. And she wakes up to see the teddy bear sat right beside the table on the bed looking at her. And it starts talking. And <laughs> I, didn't have, I didn't have a clue what it said. I, was, I could have rewound it yeah, and, yeah. and played it back. But it didn't really matter what it was saying. It was the fact that it was there and that after years of being in the house, it was still alive. Like, the batteries had not run out on it <laughs> yeah. yet. The fuck did you say? <laughs> so she takes it all the way down into the living room and just chucks it in the fireplace and watches it burn. Yeah. <laughs> and it's like, okay, that's kind of a child's play moment there. But it's the fact that the next morning she's in the shower and you watch the shower door slowly open. And she turns around and she screams. You're like, what the fuck? And then they've got the teddy bear. I'm like, that thing crawled in the fucking shower. Of okay. <laughs> okay. Right. Okay. Something is really wrong with this house. But it, it's, 
it was so really well done as well that she was, you know, she's under house arrest. She cannot go too far. That that so, is the great thing because obviously when when you're when you're in a haunted house or a haunted scenario, what's the first thing you want to do is leave. And you want most leave. people don't. Yeah, well, she can't. <laughs> she can't because she'll just be she'll just be arrested. She'll just get in trouble, and she starts to incorporate Amos's help because he. It's weird how their relationship works at first because he believes in the ghost and she doesn't. And then she starts to get more evidence and starts to believe in it. But he doesn't because he knows she's a compulsive liar. So the two of them... It's are... also the fact that, you know, she's like, yeah, this teddy bear is stalking me and attacking <laughs> me. And he's just like, all right, you're taking me for a fool now. Yeah, yeah. You know, it's just like, you're housebound. You can't do anything. You've got eight months in this house with people you don't like. So you're making this up to pass the time. And the joke's on me. Yeah, funny. Yeah. He drives off all pissed off. I got better things to do with my time than make up ghost stories. Sure you do. So Kylie has obviously uncovered the evidence about these dentures through the, the paranormal activity. And when she realizes that the next door neighbor has a retainer, she decides that she needs to sneak in there. But with the ankle tag, she's unable to leave the, leave the premises. So she garners Amos's help. And he obviously does something technological to the tag so she's got like half an hour to sneak in and find the dentures because if they can match it with the bite mark on lizzie they've got their killer you know she, she looked like she knew what she was doing de dealing with her boyfriend yeah and sneaking into the house as well you know she she says to amos she goes I, you know i know this guy's routine it's it's a great setup where she opens up the car bonnet and she pulls out the spark plug yeah and she's like i'll use this to to break the window and then Amos is like, well, maybe he leaves the keys under the mat. <laughs> yeah, and she's like, who yeah. the fuck does that these days? And she goes all the way around to the window to, to, to break in. And Amos is like, hey, look, keys are over there. Keys are over there. <laughs> I was just like, that's great. But it was freaky as well when she gets into the house and she goes past the bedroom. Yeah. And you realise that the bed is unslept in. And you're like... Well, no, I mean, it, it's a messy bed and there's cardboard boxes piled up to the ceiling. Yeah, but he's not in bed. True, yeah. And she's already said that, you know, his routine is he, do, he doesn't wake up till two o'clock. So she he should be asleep. And when she gets into the front room, there's the neighbour just fucking passed out. And you're thinking, yeah, he's, the, he, you know, he's either the serial killer or it's going to be one big massive red herring. And she finds... she. Attempts to pull the dentures out of his mouth. Is this before or after she started to go through the newspapers? The the neighbour has papers on the girl's death. Yes, that's right. Yeah. Yeah. And and you're thinking, why is he collecting all this information? But it's I loved the the, the camera work. Like I said, the, I think the, the the camera work in this film was so good that that little shot coming out of the guy's mouth. Yeah, yeah. You know, implying to you that she's not leaving without, until she goes in there <laughs> and taking that out. And you're like, no, because he's gonna fucking wake up. But it's the fact that it flies out of his mouth. He wakes up. She runs, and Amos, as he's running away from the house, gets his leg trapped in a bear trap. Not a grisly kind of break your leg and tear the flesh off trap, but, but still pins him down. Yeah, and so she uses her, you know, she uses her, her brain to cover him with an old car roof. And she was going to run off. Well, he comes out of the house with a fucking rifle or a shotgun. Yeah, well, he doesn't like <laughs> trespassers, you know. Nope. He owns that house. But it's the fact that when she gets into her house, she's hiding. And you're like, oh my God, you know. You've already had all the build-up of the supernatural stuff. Now you've got this gun-welding neighbor who could be a psychopath chasing after your your hero. And you're just waiting for the shit to happen. And she's grabbed a pair of garden shears. And as the door opens, she thrusts forward and stabs it into the stomach of Graham. And you're like, oh, oh no! No! <laughs> no! Shit! He, this guy's done nothing wrong to anybody and he's just laying there and just to make things worse she pulls them out oh god an evil dead style <laughs> blood spray right to the face <laughs> thankfully it cuts to the hospital and it looks like graham's gonna pull through <laughs> But with that kind of incident, Kylie is obviously being further watched, you know. So there's a police officer, you know, um, the social support workers back in the house and yeah. they're all talking to her to find out what happened. And Amos decides as well at this point that he's going to try and get these dentures because he wants to find out the information. And when he sneaks into the guy's house, he comes across the papers as well, photographs it to take it as evidence and then comes outside and sees the neighbor and you're thinking oh fuck 
This is yeah, it. Amos yeah. is dead now. Just browsing, are you? <laughs> Give me your home address. Maybe I'll sniff around your shit, see how you like it. But the neighbor just starts talking to him. And he starts explaining that, you know, it, it, really intelligently as well, he starts to question Amos of where he's got the information pointing the evidence of this killing at the neighbor. And as Amos is listening, I think he was called Mads. Mm. Mads, the neighbor, starts to explain that when he, you know, about 20 years ago, there was a little boy. He came and lived with him called Eugene. He was a whiz with, you know, Anything, electronics electronics anything gas he could turn a fucking car engine into a microwave oven and he was just amazing but one day mads came home and viciously beat the boy with a bike chain and the boy disappeared and so at that point i'm starting to go ah that's right when i wicked it the ghost was eugene who the fuck is lizzie so i completely missed that whole point i'd completely forgotten while watching the film about this boy eugene even though i knew everything as i walked in there and i'm thinking okay right it's eugene the ghost it's not lizzie lizzie was the red herring it's 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 eugene eugene's the ghost and you know kylie has to find the evidence about him but while graham's in hospital miriam has to visit him and you know make sure that he's okay and so kylie is just she it seemed to me like she started to help out you know she was doing cleaning the toilet, hoovering the stairs, keeping herself busy. Maybe everything has just been in, in her head. You know, she is just crazy. But then while putting the hoover back, she comes across a, a hatchway that leads into the walls or the, or the spacing in between the walls of the house. I mean, that just expands the mystery then because you're yes. just like, okay, maybe it's, maybe it's not a ghost. Maybe there's something in there. You know, or what's in there? Well, that's it. I'm thinking she's going to find the body. Yes. You know, yes. she's going to find one of the bodies in the wall and that's the supernatural stuff. Yeah. But me, I was just like, but it, it seems like it's been sealed off, like yes. on purpose. Like, yes. So who sealed it off? If there's a body in there, who sealed it? Well, that's it. And as she's searching through, she comes across an area which she's able to peer through the wall. It and looks like a hoarder's living space. Yeah. And there's <laughs> just all this electronic equipment and a figure sat watching TV and immediately my brain went, why is that ghost wearing headphones? <laughs> Not a ghost. He's not a ghost. <laughs> He's just deathly pale. You know, his hair's gone white from having no sunshine or whatever for his whole life. Yeah. This is Eugene. This is the boy who'd run away from the guy next door and is hidden in the walls of the house all this time. Kind of witnessed the murder of the girl in the house as well and is Yeah. And decided never to leave the house in case, you know, he was blamed for it. So But the fact that Kylie tries to take this evidence to the police officers to get them to look at, you know, this, 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 this hole behind her, her walls. But when she gets back there with the police officers, you know, the court appointed official, the psychologist, her mum, everything's sealed off. Everything's locked off. And my bra immediately my brain's like, everything's just in her head. I did not see a ghost sitting there with headphones on. <laughs> there, it was just, it's you know, it's just all in your head. She's she's going. She's either taking fever. drugs that we've not seen, or she's got cabin fever from well, being locked in the house. Well, that's it. She did find that bag of really old weed. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> in, in, it's in, like in maybe she's been smoking that for the duration of the film, and D it's <laughs> yeah, you know, maybe it's all Fight Club all over again. But it's the way that the police officers like, you know, we found this so. So there's something wrong with you. And they get everybody together in the front room. And Dennis, the psychologist, has, uh, who has been throughout the movie trying to work with Kylie, is trying to explain to Miriam that, you know, this environment is no good for Kylie. She's not going to get any better. She's just going to get gradually, gradually worse. And uh, she's better to come to the Institute with him so he can keep her under constant care. Because he mentions that she, she was bipolar and she should be taking medication. Mm -hmm. And if she's not being that, could be why she's splitting all over the place. And while Miriam is handing out biscuits to Dennis and the police officer, Dennis hurts himself and has to remove his retainer. 
And Kylie spots this, and I'm like, oh, oh, oh. <laughs> Seems like everyone's got dentures in this <laughs> film now. <laughs> but I'm like, okay, so this completely rationalizes fucking everything. Okay, yes, there's no ghost. But the supernatural paranormal stuff we've been capturing is the guy who's been living in the walls who had come from next door who may have witnessed the murder and has been trying to leave evidence for Kylie to find implementing, implementing the killer implementing the killer who is fucking Dennis and I'm wondering how this is all going to kick off Kylie takes Miriam outside and tries to explain it to her so that she can go downstairs and find all the old paperwork because everything from the halfway house had just been left there yeah and so she had all the staff reports and everything. She finds the evidence that Dennis worked there. And she races upstairs. And Miriam's just like, tried talking to them. But Dennis has started getting more and more agitated. Yes. And he decides that he needs to go to the toilet. So Miriam leaves him to go. And Miriam and Kylie confront him. And he's just fucking... It just goes crazy. Yeah. He's, he just has a complete breakdown and decides that he's now going to chase... The two two ladies through the house to try and kill them both. Yeah. He even pulls out the old uh, dinner fork. Yeah. Uh, uh, to, to, to use the same killer weapon. He's taken out the police officer with a corkscrew. You find him, his body in the shower. Yeah. <laughs> I loved how Kylie had slapped the cheese grater on her arm. And started cutting his face. As arm, <laughs> as arm like, armor and a knife. And I'm like, this girl's badass. I was like, you're not going to do any lasting damage really with the cheese grater. I mean, you're not going to knock him out or kill him or anything. It looked like it's it just, fucking hurt. It's just going to hurt. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And, you know, it's, it's the fact that, like I said, it, it all built up that he'd... He'd been beaten up by this 15-year-old girl, Lizzie, back in the day and taking it really quite personally. And I think at the same time she was stealing from him and just not working very well. But stabbing her 67 times with a <laughs> meat fork was a little bit much. And I love the way that Kylie's like, you didn't even get paid for it. I was like, man. <laughs> She's just trying to make him angry again. Yeah. But they escape into the walls with Eugene's help and, yes. and Kylie is wounded. And there's that kind of beautiful moment in there where, you know... Miriam finally stands up to Kylie when Kylie is giving Eugene grief. Yes. You yeah. know, Kylie is saying to Eugene, like, you fucking didn't do anything. You stood around. You were a coward. You let that girl die. And he tries to explain, like, they would have taken me away. You know, I've, I've stayed here with this knowledge forever. But it's Miriam who says, Kylie, fucking calm the fuck down. You always have a go at people. You know, just... You try to do the best of these things. And then you got a fucking... Amos finally turns up. <laughs> As at this point, when Amos came back to the house, I was just like, oh, you were, you were a great character, but this is where you die. Yeah. Like, and then I, I've seen, I've seen this That's set it. up. This That's it. In, when, I, like I said, I wicked it, and I swear I'd read he'd been decapitated. And so yeah. I was waiting this whole moment to watch his head come off. Because you have that awkward sequence where Dennis is just like, oh, you know, she was right the whole time. There's something in the house. Yeah, he starts so to Amos blame Eugene. Like, okay. Even though Amos has that slight hesitation where he's not quite believing him, still believes him in... Well, that's it. I, he, did he set up security cameras? Because I don't I, think he did in the end. I think he suggested it, yeah, but he didn't. But the wire, yeah. Oh, that, that's right, because he got shocked by the wiring. That's right. It would have been too much. But he, he... Brilliant, brilliant fucking moment where he's walking in front of Dennis and he finds the hatchway and he's like, I need something to open this. And Dennis is stood there with a the knife ready to kill him. <laughs> and he and just Amos takes, it. takes it and goes, thanks, and breaks the <laughs> knife. Yeah. And goes, oh no, I need something heavier. So then Dennis takes him out with the with fire poker. Yeah. And I'm like, I swear he was decapitated. No, incapacitated. Ah. Oh, <laughs> you just okay. read what you wanted to see. <laughs> my, like I said, my brain was like, whoa. But it... I, it comes to this great chase sequence where Dennis manages to break through the wall and actually takes out Eugene. And I thought Eugene had been killed at that point as well. Yeah. Well, that was a great moment because, you know, they're in the walls and they know that the killer is coming for them. Yeah, yeah. And Eugene just turns and says, I've got the best hiding spot. And he just chucks over the the, the the torn, ripped sheets. Yeah. Which, obviously, Miriam had said earlier in the film that she'd saw the, a spirit, a ghost, yeah. look like it was covered in, in sheets. And and we'd seen it also as well when he'd, he'd attacked Dennis. And it was a great pa psychological paranormal moment at that point of the film where all the lights had gone out and Eugene had seriously hurt Dennis, who you've realised is the fucking crazy serial killer. 
But Dennis chases them all the way up onto the roof. And in the final moments, you're just like waiting for him to fall. You think Miriam's going to fall and you get that great kind of frisbee moment of the tile from Kylie. Smacks him in the face and he hits the floor hard. And you're like, yes, he's been taken out. But it just got better. What shall I say? There's been a murder. Attempted murder. Do you want to talk to them? Why don't you just say? Because when they get down into the kitchen, Miriam's just like, she's ringing the police. She's like, uh, do I say murder? Do I say attempted murder? Do I say, do I say, we've taken out the murder? Kylie, do you want to talk to him? I don't know if I can want to talk to him. Kylie, and you're like, oh, for fuck's sake, Miriam. And then, whack. Sucker punch out of nowhere. I... I like I said, I'd read it and I totally forgot this moment. I don't know where my brain was when I read it. Because he takes Kylie out and then starts to strangle Miriam. And you're like, oh, okay, fucking people are going to die. Somebody's got to help. I, I totally thought Eugene was dead. Yeah, and, yeah, yeah. And then you see this long nail, dirty hand come out. Slightly just wake up Kylie. And he hands her the meat fork. And Kylie just rams that fucking meat fork right oh. into Dennis's chin. And I'm like, ooh. I mean, that's nasty as it is. Yeah, but <laughs> he's not dead. So are we going to watch him bleed to death? No, because we realize there's a wire hanging from the bottom of the fork all the way to the electrics. And Eugene just flicks the switch. <laughs> oh. One of the most satisfying head explosions yeah. ever. Yeah. yeah. It's the fact that the two girls are just sat there in this bathroom floor covered in blood. And what, what makes it even better is that Kylie just spits out a bit of, <laughs> yeah. bit of brain chunk. I was just like, that, that, that sealed the deal. Yeah, I didn't, <laughs> by that point, I didn't... Like, a lot of people would say, well, the special effects look a little bad, whatever. You know, at that point, I didn't care. It had been built up so well that watching Dennis's head explode and realise that all this thing has now come to this great climax, I was like, bravo, bra you got me there. That was that was a great ending. But it then cuts to seven months later. Yeah, you know, and it's the end of the eight months. Yeah. yeah, and Kylie's having her leg tag taken off. And they're talking about, oh, how, what do you do with it? Because Miriam's recording it with her video camera and he's just like, well, we'll just cut the tag and you just throw it away or you can keep it, you know, it's up to you. And Kylie, you can tell Kylie's just like, get this fucking thing off of me. And the camera just cuts out and she's like, I charged it all last night. And Kylie just screams, Eugene! And that's where it ends. You realise that he's still living there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so no one no one died except the killer. Yeah. So it's like yeah. Amos survived it, Eugene survived it, Graham, Graham survived, survived it. So it's just like, it's a happy ending where they're now all living in this house, this dysfunctional family, yeah. all living in the house. But the, the film does a great job at making you care for all of the characters. Yes. They're very believable, they're very funny, they're very relatable. And because the film sets the groundwork up so well that when the silly stuff starts happening, you're rooting for characters that you didn't really care for yes. at the beginning. Yeah. And that, again, you know... People complain again, I, I say this many times, people complain about horror movies where there's no character development. Yeah. The two female leads in this film change throughout the film and because of the circumstance and results of what's happening to them. Uh, but that's just great. Uh, that's very well written, very well directed. And so with that being said, I do have quite a few memorable sequences from the film. Yeah. Uh, the first one, the, the, the hammer at, at, the, at the, <laughs> yeah. the machine. I love the moment where Kylie's down in the basement and... You know, there's just towers of stuff down there. Yeah, yeah, and, yeah. And this great big ornament almost falls on her. It, looked, and it, it was a ghost. It looked like it was a ghost. Yeah. Sheet. <laughs> and obviously the sheet comes off, and it, it's a great big model of of Jay Z. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And she just goes, Jesus. Yeah. And I was just like, yeah, it's just great little moments like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. I really loved the sequence when. Um, Kylie tells Miriam to keep the counselor busy to distract him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And Miriam's just like, oh, you know, wh which part of town are you from? And she just keeps talking to him. It's just the way she keeps just keeping just, him preoccupied. Just do what you do best. And it's just like, yeah, talk. Just talk. Just talk. Just talk. Just talk. 
But, you know, she stole this entire film. I don't know, Graham was a cl- quite close. Graham, Graham only had a few moments, though, compared yeah, to Miriam, yeah, but, who is in the majority yeah, of the film. But his moment in the basement where he's, you know, he's just wanting to glue that staff, and you think he's freaky. Like I said, you've got this whole build-up, like, something's wrong. You know it's not Miriam, because she's so nice. So Graham's still a bit harsh, but... When he's just like holding it and they're just, she's like, how long is this glue going to take? It's like 10 minutes. It's like, oh fuck, because you know the two of them don't want to be there. But he explains about how his parents, yeah, they're the ones that fucking treat him badly. So this is why he doesn't talk. And he says to Carly, like, I don't hold anything against you. And you and Ky- you know Ky- that's where Kylie started to warm to him. A little bit, you yeah. know, yeah. Before she stabbed him. <laughs> <laughs> Amos, the ghost hunter, you know, as soon as he yeah. gets wind that there might be some super, supernatural entities going on, that audio cassette recorder was out immediately. Yeah. I also love the moment where he's taking the audio cassette tape out of the burnt up bed <laughs> yeah. and listening to it and hearing the voice that makes him go, there is something, yeah. and coming Eugene, back to the house again. You're like, oh, fuck. Yeah, yeah. Um, and of course, the the head exploding at the end. You know, that was just great. That's just the ultimate payoff for a film like this. Great, great practical, gory effect. Yeah. Uh, my favourite scenes, you know, I didn't even mark them in my notepad. Um, all of those ones that Gary have just said, uh, the the paranormal activity stuff, the little bits, like from the beginning, there was that moment where Kylie sat on the toilet peeing, you know, and she hears the noise and she has to stop peeing and then she starts again. And then she hears the noise, and then you just hear that it just makes like she's really forcing it out. All the paranormal activity stuff with Eugene turning up. I mean, I'd say paranormal it wasn't. No. But it, it in the film it implied it was. You know, like when he attacked Dennis the first time. You know, when when she found the retainer in the in the boiler. You know, and she starts to put together the evidence. You know, I loved all the action sequences. She was a pretty badass action star you know jumping out of that house and running away from from the next door neighbor and then cowering in between the walls when she first sees eugene and you don't want her to make any noise because you're like what the fuck is that <laughs> all the way up to the fight sequences with with dennis at the end you think it's going to be her and then she gets injured then she's incapacitated then she's trying to save her mum. then she's being helped by eugene who you thought was already dead you know it, 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 it was just a really Good, good fucking combination of acting, script work, editing, lighting, directing. You know, the budget was so tiny and it's just one of those examples where you go, you don't need millions and millions and millions of dollars. If you're going to remake this film, remake it with the same actors. Well, that's the the problem, is it? They don't want it. They want celebrities in these roles. That's the reason to make it. Imagine Melissa McCarthy, Melissa McCarthy, and Kevin Hart, and fucking, I don't know, George Clooney, and fucking Lisa Kudrow all stood in this film. Yeah, it's a ghost, but it's not a ghost. (laughs) Sorry. I, I guess I think I've got one other favourite sequence <laughs> as well. And that is when they're all in the walls of the house with Eugene and he's yeah. showing her all of the pictures. That was a beautiful sequence. <laughs> the, the montage of all of his of his drawings was just really nice. Yeah, that was, it that was, was the really um, That was the moment that melted Kylie as well and helped the bond between her and her mother yeah. when she saw all these things reflected right back at her. It's just like, this is the one where you punched your mum. And this is so the her, one where you're life upset. highlights in flashcards. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I love the way as well that it's he designed it where he it's him looking through the wood. Yes. So you've got the wood in the background and then what his perspective is. Yeah. yeah. I love the shot where it's of the house and you can see him in one of the windows yeah. looking yeah. down. I was just like, oh. Yeah. <laughs> well, how do you know what the outside of the house looked like? Well, I guess he lived in the house oh, opposite yeah, for a while. Yeah, so. yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, crazy. It did, it did make me laugh as well towards the end when you realised that he'd been stealing food because the mum had brought up that line where it's just like you ate the whole meatloaf. That whole meatloaf and Kylie kind of she doesn't doesn't stop, but yeah. she kind of questions like, no, no all of it, but all of it's been eaten. Yeah, yeah. There's lots of little clues. It's very well layered, uh, and it should come as no surprise that I'm definitely recommending Housebound. It's wonderful. It has a wonderful mix of great actors, believable characters, and a well crafted script. Visually, though, it's nothing too special with the camera work. And I think that's perhaps limited by the budget. But that doesn't detract from the, the visual experience whatsoever. Because it's still very well lit. And it captures the spooky, atmospheric, haunted vibe 
yes. of those sorts of films, yeah. even though that's not what, you know, in the end, the film is actually about. But it's very well paced for a long movie. It's very enjoyable horror comedy with some very memorable scenes. The film is very, very entertaining and, you know, unfortunately could be, could be a forgotten gem considering... No, it, it's on our channel, so people are going to know about it. Well, there's a lot of forgotten gems on our channel. Yeah. <laughs> definitely check out Housebound. I, I, yeah, I definitely recommend it as well. I, like I said, I thought it was going to be one thing um, and then I was completely taken on a wild fucking goose chase. If you love paranormal haunted movies, it's right up there. If you love dark comedies, it's right up there. For me, I was thinking, it's one of those films where when you are with a group of people and nobody knows what to watch, but you've got access to a copy of Housebound, watch it, you know, slap it on. Because if nobody else has seen it and you're that person who's seen it, don't tell them, just let them feel it and they'll jump, they'll, they'll get caught up in the jump scares, they'll get caught up with the red herrings, and then by the end of the film, I reckon it'll be very rare if you find somebody who goes, oh, I didn't enjoy that. And if you do, if you do find that, slap them. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for watching Off The Shelf Reviews. Drink some water. What? Oh, what? What is it? I don't know. It's not fucking water. <laughs>